Reboots of the devil, boo, hiss, come up with your own ideas, originality, rah, rah, rah. look, shut up for a minute, yeah? Film reboots, arguably not always the best idea. Power Rangers, Total Recall, and Robocop, a testament to that. But what about video games? Normally, quite a good idea. Tomb Raider, Wolfenstein, and Doom have had immense success in this area, and given how important the first-person shooter genre was to so many during their formative gaming years, Doom and Wolfenstein aren't the only FPS legends that need to make a return. I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are 10 beloved first-person shooters that need rebooting. Number 10. Turok. Right, so admittedly old Dinosaur Bill had a bit of a wanky reboot in 2008, but isn't it about time Scaly Joe got another run at things? Originally bringing Dino Mania to the Nintendo 64, the property has largely remained untouched ever since. Based on the adventures of the eponymous comic book character, the original Turok told the story of a Native American time-traveling warrior charged with protecting a barrier between Earth and a world inhabited by dinosaurs and other deadly creatures. Oh my god, what? Turns out Guns and Dinos was a winning formula throughout the N64 era, but the Turok brand was tarnished by inferior sequels and a botched reboot attempt in the years that followed. Here's hoping the Turok 2 Seeds of Evil remaster is a means of testing the water ahead of the modern rebirth this property sorely deserves. Number 9. Duke Nukem it's almost sad how much Duke's f***ed up every chance at redemption he's had, like your dad, so much so that the whole sorry affairs practically overshadowed his legacy. To be fair, a game in such public development hell for 14 years never stood much of a chance, but when it finally arrived and was a shit reboot for wankers, hashtag shit reboot for wankers, it probably scuppered any immediate plans for future Duke outings. The cigar-smoking Alien Stomper's 3D debut came at a time when the genre's shoot-anything-that-moves ideology was ripe for parody, and the Duke tore it apart, emulating the testosterone-soaked playability of Doom while parodying its conventions. With the right amount of irony, a Duke Nukem reboot could be just what the king needs. Number 8. Perfect Dark It takes a lot to upstage James Bond, but that's exactly what happened with GoldenEye's spiritual successor, Perfect Dark, in 2000. In many ways, Joanna Dark was like the Lara Croft of the FPS genre, a strong female lead who proved gunplay and racking up sky-high body counts are by no means exclusively male pastimes. Unlike Lara, however, the perfect Dark protagonist has a criminally barren CV, having only received a prequel and one Game Boy Color spin-off. Given that Tomb Raider has enjoyed such critical and commercial success since its Batman Begins-style makeover in 2013, there's no reason why lightning can't strike twice for gals with guns. Hashtag gals with guns. Number 7. Rise of the Triad Rise of the Triad graduated from the same school of gun-toting hard knocks as the genre's granddaddy Wolfenstein 3D, and will always be remembered as a quintessentially 90s FPS. The 1994 Bullet Fest is a product of its generation, a time when the best shooters involved blasting anything that moved, scouring bastard hard maze-like levels for keys, and cursing your crappy dial-up internet connection for ruining deathmatches. There were twists on the tried and tested formula, like magic weapons and power-ups that transformed you into a dog for some reason. But Rise of the Triad was otherwise one for the purists. Interceptor Entertainment rolled out a faithful yet low-key remake in 2013, but the potential is there to reboot Rise of the Triad in a more ambitious way. Number 6. Hexen Hexen's predecessor, Heretic, was dismissed as nothing more than a Doom clone upon arrival in the mid-1990s, but in all fairness, both games brought something special to the FPS genre. Heretic was one of the first shooters to feature inventory manipulation and the ability to look up and down, while Hexen was a great game in its own right, offering a dark sword and sorcery style twist to the run and gun norm. If you were to take the darker elements and visuals from, say, Skyrim and combine them with the plug-and-play accessibility of the Doom reboot, then whoever owns the property these days is looking at money. Number 5. Star Wars Jedi Knight Right, okay, I know it isn't strictly an FPS with just as much glow stick swinging as there are guns, but it does have guns. Go f*** yourself, it has guns. It has guns. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, the Jedi Knight series, which began with Dark Forces in 1996, blew our collective video game minds, but such Star Wars experiences are a lot harder to come by these days. The original Dark Forces was the offspring of Doom and Star Wars, merging traditional shooter staples with puzzles, a gripping story, and memorable power-ups. Sequels Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2 and Jedi Knight Jedi Academy built on this framework and still hold cult status, but now is the time for the series to make its triumphant return. There's room for two big-budget Star Wars franchises after all. A. Star Wars Battlefront, you big boring bastard. 
Number 4. Stalker – Shadow of Chernobyl It lost authenticity points for being set in a world where vodka heals radiation sickness. That's not how it works. Just… just stop. But Stalker – Shadow of Chernobyl's historical setting made it more chilling than your average post-apocalyptic romp. An FPS with deep survival elements, Stalker pitted players against all kinds of mutated horrors in post-nuclear Pripyat. From blood-sucking nasties to humanoids with massive heads, Adam Blompier, and psionic powers. After predictably strong sales of the fourth core installment, the Fallout series is running largely unopposed in this particular sector of the shooter genre, so it's high time Stalker rose from the ashes to have another go of things. Number 3. Metroid Prime Perhaps it's a stretch to say Nintendo's criminally neglected Metroid series was at its best during its voyage through first-person shooter territory, but the Prime trilogy goes down as a highlight of Samus's career. The Big N's new console, the Nintendo Switch, has got Zelda. It… it has Zelda. So isn't it about time they revisited some of its more overlooked properties? like Metroid. Taking the series back to its roots with a reboot has to be the best way forward, and a return to the FPS ways of the 2002 GameCube smash hit is a way of killing two birds with one arm cannon blast. Stowe. Not only bringing Samus back in a fan-pleasing way, but boosting the Switch's anemic shooter provision at the same time. Number 2. Call of Duty. Oh boy, here we are, lads! I think it's fair to say COD's been languishing for a while now. Stuck in an endless loop of futuristic shooters and fighting boring old robots and space, so much bloody space, people are starting to get over what Activision brings to dinner every year. It could be the astonishingly successful Battlefield 1, but it seems as though folk really like fighting in actual real wars from days of yore. Thankfully, leaked marketing material seems to suggest this is the direction they're going, and with a grounded, emotional story, slightly fewer silly set pieces, and less emphasis on being quite so twitchy online, i.e. you don't spawn die, spawn die, spawn die, spawn die, Activision could really get back on the FPS horse. Number 1. Time Splitters Whether you were mowing down gangsters with a Tommy gun in Prohibition-era Chicago, or taking on the role of a robot from the 24th century, Time Splitters was the absolute best. Taking the award-winning mechanics of Perfect Dark and GoldenEye and splicing them together with time-jumping chaos and gun-wielding monkeys, and we have some of the greatest achievements of the PlayStation 2 generation. A phenomenal local versus multiplayer offering and a split-screen campaign made it a must-have, and we were all tantalizingly promised a fourth entry before Free Radical went and made haze, and it was really bad, and it all just went very wrong, basically. The license is currently in weird limbo hell over at Crytek, but thankfully they have permitted a fan-made remake to be produced. And that's our list. Make sure you subscribe to the What Culture Gaming YouTube channel for more lists like this, and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. I'm Ben from What Culture. You can follow me here on Twitter, and thanks for watching.